Okay, now that we've learned the SN2 reactions, let's do a little comparison um, of these. So let's kind of compare and contrast the SN2, the SN1, the E2, and the E1, all right? So uh, first we're gonna just compare the SN2 versus the SN1 reactions, right? So we'll start with our first factor here, our substrate. So when we talk about our substrate, we're really talking about our reactant, our alkyl halide, right? We're talking about our alkyl halide, our leaving group, okay? So we need to remember for the SN2 reaction, right? This reaction works with a methyl halide, a primary or a secondary alkyl halide. Right, so a methyl halide would just be like a CH3X, right? A primary, right? That's an example of a primary alkyl halide. A secondary alkyl halide looks like this. Okay, so for the SN2 reaction, right, that'll work for a methyl, a primary, or a secondary. It will not work for a tertiary, okay? So if you remember what a tertiary is, right, that's an example of a tertiary alkyl halide, okay? So what we know here is that the SN2 will work when we have a methyl primary or secondary. The SN1, right, that works when we have a tertiary or a secondary Right, or a secondary allylic, and we'll learn what secondary allylic means a little bit later. So when you have a tertiary or a secondary, that works for the SN1 reaction, okay? So if you look here, these will work for the SN1, okay? So we can see there's overlap with a secondary alkyl halide that can undergo the, an SN2 or an SN1 reaction. So that's the first factor to consider. Second factor to consider here is our nucleophile. So with the SN2 reaction, right, with the SN2 reaction, we're usually going to have, we're going to have a strong nucleophile. It's usually going to be charged. So this will have a negative charge, okay? That's usually going to be an O minus, an S minus. It could be an acetylide anion. All right, and we'll look at our nucleophiles uh, a little bit later in a little more detail. For the SN1 reaction, that's going to be a weak nucleophile. Oh, not neutrophile, a weak nucleophile. So that's usually neutral or it's our solvent, right? So this is normally water or methanol, right, or ethanol, okay? So we have a weaker nucleophile where it's not charged. You have your ETOH, your CH3OH, your HOH. So there's not an O minus there, okay? Weak nucleophiles favor the SN1. Strong charged favor the SN2, all right? The third factor, which is important, is our solvent, right? So remember with the SN2 reaction, we know DMF, DMSO, and acetone favor that SN2 reaction, right? These solvents are called polar aprotic solvents. So they're polar aprotic solvents. That means that they are polar, they have a strong dipole moment, but they're not acidic. There's no acidic hydrogen on those. So that's polar aprotic. Aprotic means without an acidic hydrogen. Okay, those solvents, right, favor the SN2 reaction. All right, when we have polar protic, polar protic solvents, water, methanol, ethanol, right? Our nucleophile is our solvent model. That then favors the SN1 reaction, okay? And then, of course, all of these have a leaving group, right? S means substitution. They all have a leaving group here. And here we see our halogens. So iodine is our best leaving group. That's about equal to an OTOS. We'll talk about that, what, it, what that is in a second followed by a bromine or a chlorine. Okay, so our iodine is our best leaving group, our chlorine is our worst. Right, now we're kind of introducing a new concept here, an OTOS. So what is an OTOS group? 
OTAS is an abbreviation for a toluene sulfonyl group. So if we write TAS equals toluene sulfonyl, okay? So here we have an OTAS as our leaving group, okay? So if we just write a carbon chain, R O TAS, okay? That means we have some R some carbon chain, some R, that's connected to an oxygen, okay? And here's what a TOS group looks like. S double bond O connected to a benzene ring. And that benzene ring has a methyl group attached to it. Okay, so here's the O. Here is the TOS portion. Okay, so that is the TOS portion. TOS. And it turns out that an OTOS is a very good leaving group. Okay, so if we just look at a real quick example, I could write OTOS, that's an abbreviation. What that really looks like here is we have an O to an S, double bond to two O's, connected to a benzene ring with a methyl, right? That's an OTOS, right? So if I treat this with a good nucleophile, NaOCH3 and DMF, we're clearly doing an SN2 reaction. So this whole OTOS group, that whole group is my leaving group. So we simply just do an SN2 reaction and that leaves, and that is then replaced by our nucleophile, our O. CH3, okay? So we haven't really talked about these, but OTOS is our good leaving groups, okay? OTOS is a good leaving group. All right, so continuing our kind of comparison, let's now kind of compare factors favoring the SN1 versus the E1. Let's compare these two, okay? SN1 generally... SN1 or E1 generally works for tertiary or secondary halides treated with a solvent. Okay. Um, how do you differentiate between the SN1 and the E1? Again, these are not super useful reactions because they compete with each other and there's not always a clear winner. But an important note here is high temperature generally favors the elimination reactions. Right? So if you see me write heat, right, that means we're probably favoring the elimination reaction. And just a reminder, sometimes I might write a triangle, right? A triangle is an abbreviation for heat. So as chemists, we just might write a triangle. That means that you have heat. Okay, so that's kind of an important factor to know. All right. And then I just want to remind you about our practical E1. Right, our practical E1, that's when we have our alcohol treated with strong acid, right? So that's an E1 reaction. Okay, comparing, comparing the SN2 versus the E2, okay, this is an important, an important comparison, right? An SN2 is a substitution reaction, an E2 is an elimination reaction. We're forming an alkene. The big question here is, are, is our reagent going to act as a nucleophile or will it act as a base? If it acts as a nucleophile, we're doing our substitution reaction. If it acts as a base, you're doing our elimination reaction. Okay, we're doing our elimination reaction. And again, High temperature generally favors the elimination reactions. So in some cases, we're definitely going to be doing just the SN2. In some cases, we'll just be doing the E2. But in some, we could do either, and it's going to depend on other factors, our solvent, our temperature. All right? So let's break this down for a little bit. The SN2 is when you have compounds that are nucleophiles and nucleophiles only, 
Okay, these are not good bases. So if I have an HS minus or an RS minus or a CN minus or my acetylide anion, those are nucleophiles only. They're not basic, which means they're only going to do the SN2 reactions. Right, and again, right, this is charged. If you have NASH, right, that means you have an SH minus. If you have an NASET, that means that you have an SET minus, right? So to have our, or you know, another one, NAC triple bond CR, right? That means you have your acetylide anion minus, okay? Same thing for CN, NACN. So when we have the sodium salts of these, that sodium will dissociate to give you your strong charged nucleophile, right? As a reagent, we have NASCH, NASCT, NA acetylide anion, but the nucleophile is actually the charged species, the S minus, the acetylide anion. So all of these compounds here are not good bases. They're, they can only act as nucleophiles, which means they can only do the SN2 reaction. Okay? One compound can only act as a base, potassium T-butoxide, right? So this is a K plus and an O tert butyl minus. This will only act as a base. This is a poor nucleophile, right? And it's a poor nucleophile because of steric hindrance. You have these three methyl groups here that has a lot of steric hindrance. It's not a good nucleophile. It's a poor nucleophile, which means it can only act as a base, which means it will only do E2 reactions. So potassium T-butoxide will only do E2 reactions, all right? The key, the key here is there are some compounds that can do both, okay? These compounds can do both, all right? So let's kind of take a look. NaOH, right, can form sodium plus and the hydroxide anion. NaOCH3, sodium methoxide, can form our sodium plus, plus our methoxide anion. And NaOET, right, will form a sodium plus and our ETO minus, our ethoxide anion. These species here, the hydroxide, the methoxide, the ethoxide, these can act as bases or nucleophiles. They can act as both, okay? So if I write a reaction like this, and I just write NaOH, I don't know whether this is acting as a base and doing an elimination, or it's acting as a nucleophile and doing an SN2 reaction. I need more information. I need solvents and temperature to help favor this to act as a base and do the E2 or act as a nucleophile to do the SN2, okay? So right, what do we know, right? When NaOH is in the present, it is in the presence of polar aprotic solvents, DMF, DMSO, or acetone then our sodium hydroxide is going to act as a nucleophile and do the SN2 reaction. Okay, so we need more information here and the solvent can help provide that. Alternatively, right, if we use a polar 
protic solvent with our NaOH, and we have temperature, right, that will favor these compounds acting as bases, and they will undergo E2 reactions, right? So what does that look like? We could have NaOH in water with heat, or we could have NaOCH3 in methanol with heat, or we could have NaOET in ethanol with heat, right? Remember the triangle means heat, right? So notice the difference here, right? Sodium hydroxide, water, heat is going to favor the hydroxide to act as a base and do the E2. Sodium methoxide in methanol and heat will favor this to react as a base and do the E2. Sodium methoxide in ethanol and heat will favor this to act as a base and do the E2 reaction. All right? So for these three compounds here, NaOH, NaOME, and NaOET, it can do, right, this can do the SN2 or the E2. We really have to look at our solvent choice and temperature as a hint on what reaction will be favored. These reactions are always competing with each other, right? But we can set up conditions and temperatures where we get very high yields, right? Where we're getting 90, greater than 90% yields of the SN2 or greater than 90% yields of the E2 as long as we choose the correct solvents to do so, all right? So I just wanted to do a little comparison and help kind of put all of these reactions together.